Hello all you people out there in YouTube. I'm going to be trying something that I've never done before. And you can call me KTH77, but I mean, you can call me Keith. So my He's my buddy Keith. Me. Yeah. And here we've got my first guest for this show that doesn't have a name, but my guest has a name. Introduce yourself, guest. Hi there. Chris, or I also go by Mr. Babble. Babble play on YouTube. I like cartoons. He likes cartoons. We like cartoons. Yes. So, um, I'm thinking this is the way I want to open up the little thing is, uh, say, any cartoons you've been watching lately? Oh, yeah. I have been catching up on Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Loving it! Good thing. Good stuff. Well, Will sorry, Warren, I'm looking at two Will Warren, much like Steven Universe, Gravity Falls, and a bunch of other shows lately that have turned out to be awesome, the first few episodes kind of feel like they could be any other generic show in that in 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 this case in that genre in this case comedy action. Well, I know what you mean. I find it, it doesn't it, look like it's going to get any deeper until a few episodes in. There's a few shows like that where it's like starts off kind of rough but then gets kind of awesome. But funnily enough, there's another show that starts off like really really awesome, but then like. As the show progressed, they basically destroyed every trace of awesome that show had to offer, which is like... And that show was called Lost, ladies and gentlemen. That isn't a cartoon. I don't know why you're bringing it up. Well, I was thinking about that Canadian-slash-Japanese Pac-Man cartoon. It started with a lot of promise and then just killed every ounce of promise it had bit by bit. And I'm like, why you do this? And they're like, you got you to remember, you're talking to somebody who grew up as a little kid when the original Pac-Man cartoon was on. The only one of that But they just I, made up a bad guy in a cloak who was in charge of the ghosts. Was it that ghost witch person? No, the ghost witch was in the video game. This was some weird... Uh, just... You could tell he was a video game mad scientist. Or video game. He was a, a video game universe mad scientist. He had a... Bald, incredibly bald head, very angry eyes, and this cloak with a weird collar that covered the lower half of his no face. So uh, he, they never had to draw his animate his mouth moving. Why? Why did? Why did he employ ghosts? Because they could die over and over again, and just the eyes would float back and get more suits. At the very least, in the uh, Canadian Japanese cartoon. They made the big bad just a really cool looking ghost. With a very very on the nose name. He was called General Betrayus. Can you guess what he did? Mail fraud? Yes, but he also <laughs> He also I am so smart. I am so smart. He also like betrayed the pack people. He betrayed the pack people and started a civil war and junk. I guess he wanted to be the leader of the pack. Did I just reference a 50s song? Yes, I did. I'm old, but I'm not that old. Jeez. Jeez, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Star Wars oh, is the first thing, though, When I grew up in the 80s, my mom was listening to the oldies stations when I was a little kid in the car, so... I know the Beach Boys and stuff. You know, it's odd... I had parents that grew up in, like, the, I think the 70s and the 80s. Well, no, not really in the 80s, but definitely in the 70s. But they really weren't super big into retro stuff when I was growing up. They were pretty contemporal well, people. Think of, the, think, think, of na think of when you were a teenager. Or you're, think of when you were in high school or follow in the ages that most notably follow the popular trends. Think what percentage of people follow those trends and what people never bothered. Hmm. You know, it's it's like... In cartoons and sitcoms, you like the seventies. Everybody had an afro and platform shoes and disco outfit. No, no. It, there was no craze that everyone, you know, no craze or style adopted by everyone ever. So, having not grown up in the eighties, I still have to say there's a lot of really good eighties music. Oh heck yeah! And there's a lot, I'm very surprised, this coming from an old man, no, I'm very surprised there's a lot of uh, 80s style stuff that's coming out now but is in that old, you know, a tribute to that old style, and it's pleasant to listen to. 
Indeed. You gotta understand, though, the 80s also has its incredible crimes to pay to admit to. It's when the synthesizer was invented. The music, you know, the keyboard, the, the electric keyboard. And we kind of sort of went a little crazy with it. And I bet then, therefore, Bill Cipher hated the 80s. Not electronic synthesized music, it burns! Perhaps you don't remember I've seen that. the show, episode. I don't remember that bit, but I'm going to assume he said it. It, it was from the first um, Bill Cipher episode. It's when Mabel got the Xylar and. Was it, oh! To like, yes. fight back against Bill. I'm really confused of what those two guys are supposed to be. Are they supposed to be 80s? Because they also kind of have twinges of 90s to them. No, no, the, those, those two are very much 90s boy band. Uh. Yeah, the, the, those guys are not 80s at all. Ah, okay. If they were 80s, their clothes would have been ripped and their hair would have been either floofed or spiked. I think they were pretty spiked, though. Like, I... I, I'm a li I admit, I am blanking a little bit on them because they were just goofy background bit characters. I should... At some point, we should pause the podcast and I should begin inflicting 80s cartoons on this guy. Ah, uh, I've had my fair share. I've I I sat through sep quite a few of the episodes of the G One Transformer show. Oh, that's the good end of the spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're it. cheating on that one, buddy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no, you don't. If you know, you're epic not getting away that easy. <laughs> if epic battle of everyone standing in a static pose shooting each other is the good end, I'm a little bit scared. Nah, we, we, nah, 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 see, you see, you, we're going to have to get into the and sun territory to get you the right exposure, okay? Yeah, you know, the and sun territory? Those of you who were alive in the 80s will remember Pink Panther and Sun, Popeye and Sun. I'm not friggin' kidding, they gave Popeye a kid. It, it, it's... Muppet Babies was a good thing, but it did a bad thing by touching off an explosion of little kid versions of shows. And that went strong right into the 90s with, like, the Tom and Jerry kids show and, uh... Well, Tom and Jerry are a special case. Tom and Jerry were never targeted specifically at children. They were originally some of those, sh you know, back before TV was a thing, when they were shown, when movie, or t when animation shorts were shown before movies... They were, quote-unquote, all ages. I know they're horribly violent by today's standards, but they were there to make, you know, to be clean enough for the kids, but also well done enough to make the adults not roll their eyes and wish they'd stayed home. That is why Tom and Jerry kids kind of, you know, didn't do overly well, and why all of the Tom and Jerry movies that the Nostalgia Critic has looked at have bombed so horribly. They are you know, laser targeted at the early elementary demographic. Also, apparently they had, like, they pretty much remade a, uh... They pretty much completely remade Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but inserted Tom and Jerry into it because it fell into the public domain or something like that. Yes. That was weird. They're very, very weird people. Hollywood people. It's... You... It, yeah. You do know that uh, how the Roadrunner and Coyote cartoon were created, right? I actually don't. I just All right. Really it was backgrounds. created to take a jab at the success of Tom and Jerry because I think it was Chuck Jones, I believe, who thought it was, you know, anybody could do this quote-unquote cat and mouse stuff. So he took his own two animals and tried to jack it up so ridiculous that it was, you know, over the top. But everybody loved it. That is amusing. I think you were supposed to be steering me towards Nicktoons at some point. Well, uh, the Cartoon Network. No, wait, Cartoon Network. Network. Brain fart. Nicktoons. Spoiler, another episode. I might not be on that one, but Nicktoons will be covered. Rest assured, do not get angry Nickelodeon fans. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to stretch this out a little bit so I could at least get a little bit of Star Butterfly's head done. Ooh, Okay. But anyways, uh, back to you were watching uh, Star vs. the Force, Forces of Evil lately. How caught up are you? 
not all the way, but all the way to the new season. I had been waiting patiently. Quite. I guess it's not the new season anymore, but still. Uh, without spoiling too much, uh, Ludo has something he's wanted a long time, but now he wants something else, and now he's got that. Uh, that's Okay, I'm spoiling. Uh, Non-spoiling doesn't help. I'm well in. I'll find out where I am. You might want to edit that babble out. It's dumb. Ah, a little dumb babble is good for the podcast. It's good for podcast, yes? Besides, I introduced myself as Mr. Babble. Ah, the last episode I watched was Season 2, Episode 12. Into the Wand and Pizza Thing. Ah, okay, so, yeah, you haven't even gone to the Battle of Muni new season episodes. No, that is a new season. I was, I, I admit, I was not wanting to finish watching the current season because I knew it, it might lend on a cliffhanger, cliff, cliff on a cliffhanger. So I was deliberately putting off watching the rest of the season until the new one came out, and I never got around to it. Oh, well, now you got something to look forward to seeing. Most definitely. I. Uh, I think. Oh wait, I, I I haven't. You haven't done the Fantasia challenge. No, what's that? All right, Fantasia. The initial concepts were done when they took artists in, either eyes closed or in some cases blindfolded or wearing sleep masks, and played classical music, and asked them to describe what they saw and then draw some of that out just what their imagination saw when they played that classical music. So with the uh, Fantasia challenge, <coughs> you do what they did. You take a piece of classical music, you take an artistically inclined person, you let them lay down somewhere comfortable and just listen to the tire piece and then give them something to draw with and see what came to mind. Ooh, that does sound interesting. I'll have to look into that. But anyways, I was going to say, I have... I forgot to answer the question that I asked, because that's also what I want to do, so to say what I've been up to, and recently I just uh, watched up the new season of the, uh, also another Disney Channel show, Pen Zero Part-Time Hero. Like, when you see the commercial for it, you kind of think, ah, it's another one of those crappy, cheaply animated flash shows, but nah, it actually has, like, a really solid style, really solid writing, like, really funny stuff, and the second season, they're, like, able to go way darker with the humor than I thought they would be allowed to on Disney Channel. Like, one of the characters is a pet bear, and she's dragging, the pet bear's dragging a character on, she's like, be careful not to puncture jugular. Very messy. Hard to okay. get the blood out of carpet. Much scrubbing. How many times during Gravity Falls did you go, I is this still Disney? Did I change over to Adult Swim at some point? Well, I mean, just, I, but I was, like, saying that even more for this show, just because the amount of times they made a joke involving blood directly, I was like, wow. But anyways, it's... You deserve a prize! Have a head that's eternally screaming! <sighs> yeah, good stuff. There but, you go, kid, I like you. Have some deer teeth. But, uh, yeah, Pen Zero Part-Time here, it takes the, it's basically the concept of the multiverse exists, and they all usually follow the kind of tropes and ideas of movies and stuff. So... It's kind of like being zapped into a whole bunch of different movies and shows, but they're actual alternate dimensions where the consequences have real consequences. I think I made Star Skirt a little too. Yeah, that's Channel little Chasers. Too yes. Flint? Meat? We're in the Flint Beats! I can't do Cosmo. And I'm Cosmo! All right. You, so, you can't do Cosmo, but you can do Cosmo much better than I can. Yes. I fail, but I fail slightly less hard. Yes. Hi, ho there, Kermit the Frog. And welcome to The Muppet Show! Yay! Not technically a cartoon. Yes. It's not really an animation, really. I mean, you could argue, like, claymation is animation, definitely, but puppeteering, no, there's no work... Does the person, quote-unquote, animating and moving the puppet count as an animator? Uh, I, I don't know. I'd like to give a technicality, at least. I'd like to say honorary mention, at the very least. That could be an interesting side project, by the way. I'd have to actually do some research, though. 
the top ten puppet-related things that aren't Jim Henson stuff. Oh, that, ooh, that definitely is worth looking into. Any what? How about we start moving into what's going to be the main topic of today's not really exactly a podcast, but for convenience sake, not quite a vlog either. I need just to find a pit draw the for it. Just, just draw a rivet and the others on, on the on the cover sheet and call it a botcast. Yeah, the botcast! Oh, that's another thing I was thinking of, maybe showing a bit of a preview of some of the animatics for upcoming works I'm working on. Oh, that's an idea. There you go. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to stick that at the end. You hear that, folks? you got to wait to the end to see the cartoon featuring characters you've never seen before instead of sticking through and slogging through all those dumb characters from popular shows. Yeah, that's the real treat. Anyhow, I... I could just skip to the end. <laughs> they don't. Right. They may or may not know that. If they don't know that, I want to take advantage of that. All right. So we are going to be discussing the early days of Cartoon Network, I believe. In the... not in a historical sense, but more the shows we loved, and more particularly how they affected, you know, the cult. Well, not how they affected the culture, but how they affected our humor development. Indeed, and uh, this really, I really got thinking about this because I just watched a video talking about sort of modern Cartoon Network and sort of their how they don't have that many running shows and how they kind of milk certain shows to death even though it has a bit of a backlash but let's let's not get into the negativities let's get to the positive stuff the and I give a little bit of backstory on one aspect of Cartoon Network's earlier earlier achievements go on ahead as someone who was Technically born in the last months of 1979, but wasn't really conscious and aware until the mid-80s, I can tell you, anime was not a thing in America. There were a few that aired, like uh, Speed Racer and whatnot, but there was no marketing to tell us this was from Japan, and all cartoons drawn by different people look different, so to, you know, six- and seven-year-old me... Speed Racer was just a cartoon where they had a weird, different art style. Cartoon Network was the first to really push anime, even if I can still remember when they were calling it Japanimation. Uh, they were a lot of kids, and some young adults, and even older adults, first exposure to some of the more serious anime, because one night, or one series of weekends, they showed Vampire Hunter D, Twilight of the Cockroaches, and... Oh, God, I think they showed that really sad one with the kid carrying his little sister on his back away from the disaster. Hmm. What was the name of that? I mean, anyway. I, I just want to... So sorry, sorry. I just want to say that Cartoon Network, if not being responsible for, laid the groundwork and made the love-it-or-want-to-kill-it anime craze of America possible. I know I was introduced to my first Japan animations through them, particularly Tenshi Muyo, one of the first harem shows of its kind. Which yeah, well, uh, my first anime was Ranma One Am. Ah, I never actually watched that show, even though it's like a big part of like the cultural foundation of nerd nerdism. Nerditude. So, did you ever watch Dracula, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, original Frankenstein? Nope. Did you ever watch Citizen Kane? That uh, I, that's on my to-do list. See, it's we're all supposed to. <laughs> I need to watch it so then when I see something I like, I can say it's the Citizen Kane of that. What the thing is, you've seen it. There are with an, as many respins, parodies, and homages as you have seen in a child of the '90s, 2000s, and beyond. Can you not tell me the story of Charles Foster Her Charles Foster Kane without actually having read the book or seen the? Well, I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I do not know if there's a book without actually having seen the movie. Uh, there's politician. There's corruption, and there's that one thing that I know the twist, even though I don't know the significance of the twist. And but I would feel bad spoiling, it, even though everyone knows. But you can tell the basic outline of the story. You could write the TV guide blurb. Probably. Exactly. 
once again, Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Have you ever read the original short story? Not at all, but that one, that one is. Do you know it start more or less even what happens in the end? Yep. Unfortunately, Doctor 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 Jekyll isn't always angry, so he doesn't have that secret on his side. Yeah, how noodly that they make the character's arms and Star Wars. The oh, yeah. Evil. Yeah, very much so. Are, are we really drawing Star while we're talking about Cartoon Network? Well, we haven't mentioned a specific show yet, so I haven't shifted to drawing them. Ah, okay. Ah! Yeah, can't do that one. Man, man, Hanama. Unfortunately, the first show to come to mind was the, not the movie, but the TV series Lilo and Stitch, and that's not Cartoon Network. I did rather like that show, even though the the second season, you know, wasn't as amazing as the first season. I think I think the uh, Halloween episode is worth doing an episode over. Oh, that definitely. Where they were confronted with their fears. Experiment three hundred, spooky. No, stop! No, we're naming facts. Of, okay, no. I just <laughs> think it's really fun. Okay, spoiler. I don't care. Spoiler on a what eighteen twenty year old cartoon now. How old is it? Anyway, well, I just think it's funny the ghost intense. ends up, the, the, the spooky haunting experiment ends up in one of the animatronics at a children's pizza restaurant. So uh, basically, it's the pre-origin story of uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes! Except, you know, he's a lot nicer. Started off mean. No, you don't know how it goes down years later. Oh, yeah. All stars go through a horrible... Downward spiral. Spiral. Now you see. Remember, Jumba introduces himself every time to this day as evil genius. What if there's a little switch inside every one of those quote unquote reformed ones, ready to destroy? Oh, uh, I mean there is. There's a little switch in their brain. It is, and it's triggered by the the pink femme fatale experiment singing to him. Bougie boo. That's all I remember. I did not actually see the episode, but I saw the commercial for the episode. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Cartoon Network. Um. Uh... Well, the first one that comes to mind for me personally is Courage the Cowardly Dog. Is, of course, the Moxie show. Oh, yes. Courage, of course. Courage the Cowardly Dog. Who will protect our home? All right. That was by There Might Be Giants. All right. Favorite episode. Go. Ooh, favorite episode? Ooh, that is hard to say. Can I, like, narrow it down to, like, a top five of what pops into my head? All right. If you'll let me give discur- if you'll let me tell you about my favorite episode, because I don't remember the title. Okay, doke. Cool. All right. Mine was the one with the guy with the cannonballs that made people sad, and it's not that he was evil out to destroy, just evil. It was he was so depressed and wanted everyone else to feel it, feel it too, because nothing could cheer him up. And in the end, courage and some happy plums that Muriel made made him feel better. That has some pretty nice music in it, like this sort of. <laughs> well, the dramatic... music start. I the music in Courage was is I I would buy an album of it. Oh yeah, although you know might give a pass on King Ramses, the Pharaoh's curse, the Pharaoh's curse. Oh okay, that's not actually part of what you would put on a uh, joke track. If it was on a joke track, I would approve. <laughs> but yeah, that. Yeah. I can't remember what it's called either. The ta- I think it's like just the Tower of Dr. Sad... Whatever his name was. Right. Give me a hug. Now, they, they had a lot of good episodes. Oh, yeah. Like, uh... <clears throat> there's the... There's a little tearjerker of the Last of the Star Makers. Oh, yeah. Mr. Enter's already covered that. Yep. And, uh... What about the Great Fusili? Uh, the Great... That was the Gator, right? The Gator Magician? The episode that had the dark twist ending? Oh, yeah, that was... I was... When I saw that as a kid, I was like, a happy ending? I guess. Yes! Basically, if they're dead, turn to puppets or not, Courage is maintaining a facade of his normal life by... Playing with their corpses. Yeah, that's... That, that was one of the more messed up endings, I have to say. 
Uh, let's not forget the time two two snuff film directors came back from the dead to try to make more movies and kill Muriel and Eustace. Yeah. Well, weren't they based on, like, Quentin Tarantino? At least their name was a parody of it. Yeah, Benton Ten Tarantella or something like that. Yes. And the other one was based on a... I don't remember his name, but I remember it was based on a old 20s, 30s black and white movie actor. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm trying to think of other... of those... Well, I have to say probably my favorite episode is actually the last episode... Both oh, where that where Courage's self doubt manifests as that twisted teacher lady. Yeah, and I believe that was also yeah. paired up with um, the Origin of Courage episode yeah. as well. Where we I didn't out. see it until it was pointed out online. But have you ever noticed how that teacher is never around when any other character is actually physically in the room and addressing Courage? I never noticed that either until it was, as you said, pointed out to me online. I was like, oh, that's cool. Again, props to Mister Enter. Indeed. But yes, the that I'll just just the way that ending was that sort of, even though it was a weird dead Russian fish meal that pointed out the message, it was still a very sweet message. No, without a doubt, yes. But yeah. Yes, and let's let's talk about Ed and Eddie then. How'd you know? No, yes. I Okay, I'm going to say that right off the bat. The first time I saw it, before I had actually watched it, I hated the art style. I thought it was cheap, lowbrow, and disgust. Or not lowbrow. I thought it was cheap, you know, quick, lazy, and kind of gross with all the weird colors. Now, it's... I, I don't know why, but liking the show has made me hate the art less. I, I guess it's when you... It's when you see that the writing isn't cheap that you're not like, oh, they're not skipping out. It's just like a weird, wibbly thing. And Plus, it does allow for some... They do get some pretty, like, crazy, wild animation in there. I often... I'm very okay with skimming on the designs and stuff if you still have really nice movement to them. Hey. I have an idea. Yeah? Unfortunately, it would have to be, like, at least a few minutes long to be right, but basically it's a war animation. You know, soldiers die, you know, victories are achieved, and then at the very end, it turns out they're all kids playing outside in the park, and every so quote-unquote soldier who died was a kid who got called home by his parents. Ooh, that's interesting. Anyhow, um, do you have any particular memories of a particular episode, Ed and Ed, you'd like to share? Um, I want to start off by saying, you know what, that's really neat that you came up with all that stuff about how, oh yeah, it, it, there's, you know, some, if you stretch, there's some instances, instance, there's some evidence they're all dead and this is purgatory, blah, blah, blah. Why the hell do you have to take something sweet and innocent and turn it into that dark crap with everything? Yeah, I mean, you know what? I mean, there's, you know, if you want to go, like, try to analyze Earthbound with its dark ending, I'm like, sure, you could analyze that, but, you know, I don't think the Rugrats oh. was a weird world where everyone was twisted and angelic as an insane asylum, and I don't think... Ed and, and all the babies are either dead or were never born. Right. And I don't think Gumby characters represent the seven deadly sins or the different drugs or... Yeah, I'm old. Gumby, yeah. I'm terrified to know which one would have been Lust. I don't want to know either, but they've said the same things about Spongebob. Hmm. Lust is kind of an iffy one, but Spongebob tends to love the world, so boom. But then there's Mr. Krabs for Greed, Patrick for Sloth, it's a bit of a stretch, but just from, like, in, there's a handful of episodes that he qualifies for it. Gary for gluttony. Would, uh, Sandy be pride? Pride. Yeah. Plankton is envy. Yes. And I'm not sure if that's seven, and I don't care. 
because I can't name any more SpongeBob characters. Because remember, I was probably in high school when SpongeBob came out, or middle school at least. Bridge is a lot easier to draw than Star is. When I was little, it was He Man and the Masters of the Universe. And when I was five, I didn't know what gay, I didn't know what sex was, so I didn't know what gay was. So you can't make any of the, oh, so gay, running around in that thong, harness, whatever. Yeah. Now it looks pretty weird, but back then, he was just the guy who stopped the bad guys. But did he look more, but he still looked far less weird than, um, God, what was his name? The guy who, the main character of Zardos, essentially. Zardoz is... Oh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery, yeah. In that little space diaper? Yeah. Look, oh, Sean, yeah. I love you, buddy, but I mean, you didn't exactly pull off the look. But then again, no one can. I think you're fighting a losing battle, my friend. Anyhow, well, I'm usually not a big fan of slice-of-life type of stories myself, but I just really liked Ed and Eddie. I think it's because... It was such a surreal take on the idea. Okay, here's That's my really thing. Interesting. I cannot even enjoy the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy because I hate Billy so much. The annoying, stupid character I usually hate, but there's some I absolutely love and would you know always love. Big Ed, Pinky. I love Pinky. No, <laughs> um, Hey, God, Blaine. Play? Yeah, but uh, there are some stupid characters I love, and I do not know what makes them stand out. Uh, Seuss. Seuss is awesome. Sorry, dude. Alright, uh, hey, dude, check it out. Huh. That's pretty weird, right? But, but no, uh, like, like I said, Billy annoys me so much that I can't enjoy the rest of the show. Oh, yeah. I, know, I just had trouble enjoying that show because of how gross it was. It kind of leaned a little too far to the gross-out humor as the show went on. Oh, you could do an entire topic from a nine, for, nine, for nine, early 90s kids about gross-out cartoons that tried to be Ren and Stimpy but without the intelligence. Yeah. Though, I will also they just assumed the gross-out was what attracted people. Though I will also say... As a kid, I wasn't even a fan of uh, Ren and Stimpy myself. Sacrilegious, I know, an animator who didn't like Ren and Stimpy, but look. Solidarity still... Profist. Yeah, I still really appreciate the animation. I... It gets really interesting and twisted. It's I appreciate just... it too, but I especially hate it when they would do those super detailed close-ups of some horrific eyeball or rotten tooth. Normally, I don't like those either, but in one show... The way they use gross-out close-outs I actually legitimately like. What was it? It was Super Robot Monkey Team by Perforce Go. <laughs> I know, silly name, but the show actually has these almost kind of Lovecraftian themes of, like, it's not meant to be funny, a gross-out close-up. It's more meant to be legitimate Lovecraftian body horror close-up, and I it's like it. It's supposed to shock and disturb. Yeah. Like, at one point, an, a mad... Essentially, a mad scientist makes... A, clo a fly human clone of someone and they're just like <laughs> just it's meant to be super uncomfortable because this guy has been cloning this one person and making horrible abominations out of him for so long that there's just so many disturbing variants of this one clone I, I, I like that show alright while well, we're talking about Cartoon Network's early days do you happen to remember O Canada? Oh, Canada. Was that an actual show? Oh, Canada was a show where they... It was a one of those collection of shows where they showcased some uh, shorts oh, wait, by Canadian animation teams. Like, oh, car oh, what a cartoon, you mean? Nope. Oh, Canada. Huh. I can Google it if you like. Okay. Never heard of that one. I know the, like, what a cartoon show, which is where a lot of pilots... Oh, yeah. Dexter's Laboratory, Powerpuff Girls. I think... I think Codename Kids Next Door was a part of that. I do know that. Yes, they were it was. And the thing pilots. is, it, they, it it won a it won a viewer poll to see if it which show would get its own which short would get its own show on Cartoon Network. Right. Damn it! I hate that. I forgot. You can't friggin' link from Google. You got to actually go to the page because if you try to copy link from Google, you get ten mile long chain of gargle mesh. 
but yeah, O Canada was basically a chance to showcase and spotlight Canadian animation projects on American TV. How interesting. Oh, yeah, and you if you have not seen it, many of these shorts listed on the wiki page for O Canada are worth looking into. I definitely will. I, I, I remember more of the other stuff, like What a Cartoon, because they had some weird pilots as well. Like the Proto Family Guy? Yes. So, you know you exactly know. what I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, yeah. And, like, I even knew about that before Nostalgia Critic made his little video, and I was like, yeah, that show, I watched that. And I remember later in my life I watched it again. I was like, hey, I remember when I was a kid and saw this. Wait a second. That's oh, Seth hell yeah. McFarlane. That is Seth McFarlane. Yes. <laughs> they are not making adult it. jokes. I did not know Nostalgia Critic mentioned it. Yeah, he made an episode about this. Uh, I think it was like talking about, hey, what if, you know, Family Guy wasn't made for adults? Well, here's an actual pilot episode of it. Yeah. It is very fascinating. And weird to see it's a lot of the same humor as there. It's just in that cartoon, he still makes bizarre quote unquote cutaway gags, but they're not exactly cutaways. There's just like randomly a paranoid Scotsman there. There's randomly a horse there. They also had like a proto. Uh, what's the name of like the sexual deviant dude? Quagmire. Yeah, they had like a proto Quagmire. <laughs> right. Who's like had the voice and was a pilot, but you know clearly did not have the sexual themes to him. He like, he like actually, he like actually brought his son to work on the airplane and then went to get him ice cream afterwards after the kid crashed the plane. Ah. Oh yeah. But um. Among the what a cartoons, I remember one pilot that stuck with me all my life was, like this sort of, um, Buck Rogers parody, except like the main character was a crab. It was strange. Like it ended up with like a parasite attaching to his like, ensign's alien style, but then when it like detached from him, the ensign turned into like an attractive girl. It. Was it was a very strange short. Transgenderism, quite early. Good for them. Yeah. I mean, it was those unwilling, so it's more like those uh, kind of uncomfortable DeviantArt comics a lot of people like to make. Ah! There's some pretty weird crap out there on the DeviantArt side. I'm not picking on DeviantArt itself. What I mean is some people are into some weird crap. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I this is on a personal experience. I remember reading this online. Somebody was just digging through YouTube. He can't remember what he was searching for, but he found somebody's playlist, and it was nothing but clips of girls in cartoons and movies being turned to stone. And he was like, "Well, this is weird. I oh god, this is somebody's fetish." Oh yeah. You know, a little off topic, but it does involve cartoons, especially cartoons I grew up with. A gag that's fairly common in cartoons is a cartoon character gets inflated like a balloon. And it's like, ha, it's funny. It's a weird physical comedy that can't actually happen. Also, a creep... Oh, no, sorry, I'm not going to say creepy. I apologize. I don't even think it's that creepy compared to, you know, things that actually hurt people. Yeah. But balloon, you know, inflation is a fetish. Yeah, and it's like... I'm not going to get down on people for liking that, all right? I'm not going to be like, how dare you? I'm just kind of bummed out because it's like... I loved seeing those gags as a kid in cartoons, and now I can't comfortably animate a scene with a character inflating like a balloon because I'm just gonna have somebody to might enjoy it too much. Well, the, yeah, and I'm like, ah, I feel uncomfortable. And I'm not even right. like, ah, you know, yeah. you know, you do you, I'll do me. But it's just I'm a little bit like, man, that thing that used to be fun and innocent is kind of not as innocent as it used to be. But then again, remember, everybody's tastes are different. Like, I, I'm sorry, my brain just pictured a guy in just that little, just in pants and that full face gimp bondage mask saying to somebody else, no, nah, I'm just not into feet. They're just feet to me. Can you hit me a little harder? Uh, definitely. 
Definitely. Anyhow, uh, do, do, do. Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Oh, yeah, we, we, we brought up Ed and Eddie, but we didn't actually talk about it. So we're back on track. Back on track. All right, so uh, Ed, Ed, Eddie, any outstanding memories of the show? Oink, oink, oink. I am a lizard, baby! Oink, oink! I don't know why, but that line has stuck with me in my entire life. Oh, it, it stuck with me for a while. Like, at one point when I was a kid, I was like, that's it, I'm gonna write a fan comic about the adventures of Lizard Lizard Man and the Frog right. Mouth Kid. Yes. Can we at least acknowledge one thing about the show, and that if the Eds had been girls and the Kankers were boys, it would have been really, really objectionable? Oh, yeah. Definitely. There's... But somehow it's not objectionable because it's girls and guys. Yeah, there, there's definitely uh, some double standard situations going on. With, but I think part of that is... I think that might be part of the reason why the show shifted slowly from them wanting to kiss and marry them to them just beating the ever-loving crud out of them. Yeah. I think that changed around the psych reverse psychology episode. True, true. Okay, I can't think of my favorite, but I can think of my least favorite episode. Oh, and what was that? It's probably the one with that telephone. Telephone. Cursed telephone, where just bad crap keeps happening to Eddie. Oh yeah, I vaguely remember that one. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. Everybody's kind of being a jerk sometimes. Yeah. In that episode. I have to say, I was never a fan of Kevin as a character. Nah, I, I, w I, would, I would spend a week locked in an elevator with Kevin rather than spend time with Jimmy and, and Sarah. Well, I don't, know. I don't know. I think I'd be willing to spend time with Jimmy if he wasn't with Sarah. I kind of feel like they kind of negatively feed into each other. No, he's still horrible and annoying and evil. Do you remember the episode with the jujubes and the big heart float they were making that oh, yeah. he framed them for wrecking? I think that only happened because Eddie, Eddie, yeah, yeah, Eddie basically taught Jimmy how to scam. I think that was a two different episodes. Well, it was two different episodes, but I think it happened but afterwards. That, you're right. So probably so. He, like retained, yeah. That, that was interesting. That show sometimes remembered it could have continuity. Not and other times happened. did not care. And one time they just went full Looney Tunes insane with reality, and that was awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely one of my favorite episodes. Don't also, worry. I think it, it was more phone. memorable because it came in an otherwise, you know, not realistic, because, you know, they ran full face into brick walls all the time. But, uh, or not all the time, but you know what I mean. Stuff like that happened. But yeah. it was not a true, absurd reality cartoon beyond that one episode. That show definitely struck a very interesting balance. I should actually save. Oh, yeah. Anyhow... Why was I being quiet? I was not wanting to interrupt. That is, my brain did not want to interrupt your saving. That is dumb. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that's why I want guests on my show, because... Yes, I should be talking while you're doing things like looking up controls. Or, you know, like concentrating on drawing. I easily get lost in drawing, which is why I'm... Well, I'm helping keep streamer. you out of it. Yeah. Anyhow... Another show that's... Much more of a weird one. It didn't quite have the lasting power of the other shows we mentioned. Is uh, cow and chicken. Cow and chicken. Yeah. It's I consider it the Rocco's Modern Life of Cartoon Network. Yeah, though I'm gonna say I probably prefer Rocco's Modern Rocco's Life was... over the cow and chicken personally. Eh... Oh god, that's a hard decision. They both had. They were both really fun. Oh my god, they were both they were both almost the exact same kind of really fun. Although I, I liked Rocco a bit more just because I liked the character of Rocco, this this just this very soft spoken nice guy. Yeah, Rocco was a sweetie heart. 
Well, Sweetheart Chicken is sort of this kind of this rude Bro Brooklyner situation. Like, hey, I'm Chicken. And eh. Cow is annoying. Yeah, Cow's more annoying than nice. She's like Heifer, but, you know, with a bit nicer than... I, mean, I guess Heifer was nice. It's, it's... No, Heifer is... Heifer is nice, but he's, you know, the kind of stupid that will trample all over your stuff and never realize it. I will say, Heifer never dressed up in a purple sleeper, spoke Spanish, and beat up the devil. <laughs> so now, now, they were very El strict Rastate. about him not being the devil. He was the red guy. Well, he was the devil and a pilot. Yes, he was. Hello, I'm the devil. He also had Cerberus. <laughs> this is my dog, Cerberus. Yeah. He's got three hands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't quite remember a favorite episode, but I do remember the episode that basically effed me up for a long time. Buffalo Gals. What? Oh, no, I didn't see that one. Oh, okay. It was the one where Chicken wanted to be a professional plastic surgeon. So you had all these people, like, being plastic surgified, I guess, into different people. Like, So, like, for the final challenge, they had to make a banana slug. And, like, at the end, you see the guy that Chicken basically turned into a banana slug holding a mirror and then crying. He's like... My god, he did not consent to this. He was That's unwillingly freaky. turned into a banana slug. Well, I would be traumatized, but that happens to be my fetish. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, you don't know how hard it is to find crying being, crying banana slug porn. <laughs> yes, I'm totally kidding, I assure you. Oh. That would be creepy. All right. <clears throat> would their own salty tears hurt themselves? I don't know. I don't think they would cry salty tears. I don't think slugs cry at all. They don't have eyes. They got weird stalks. Oh, but talking about cow and chicken, we should talk about the spin-off that came out of cow and chicken. I am Weasel? Oh, yeah. I... There was... I R Baboon and I am Weasel. He was voiced by Michael Dorn. Michael Dorn, yeah. There, that was most definitely a, a plus to watching it. But uh, I'm, I'm going to admit right now I didn't watch much of it and I don't remember much of what I watched. The only one I remember is the documentary episode where the baboon keeps moving his home and then it turns out it's because the weasel documentary maker is following him. Right. Well, actually, I just actually remember what my favorite episode of Cow and Chicken was. I'll go for it. It was the uh, video game episode, Squirt the Daisies. Not ringing any bells, cousin. Basically, they were in an arcade, and the red guy basically shows Chicken his, like, super high-tech virtual reality game. But they're all, like, really stupid games, like Kick the Can and Duck Duck Goose, but they all have, like, a deadly twist to them. But in the end, like, the, he gets put into the game that Cal was playing, which is basically an arcade game about watering flowers called Squirt, Squirt the Daisies. The daisies. So they, but then all the daisies turn to like these like horrible monster piranha plant things, and they have to battle them. And he wears no pants. Nope. No protection. None at all. But uh, it, had, it just had really nice music to it. I guess I just really remember the way the music of that episode was. More than. I'm gonna wind things back a few years and talk about one of their earliest independent successes. Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Ah, greetings, humans. Are you getting enough oxygen? Yes, it was classic, it was awesome, and it was the most absurd use of a forgotten license I could have thought of. I am a big okay, fan of that Okay, the show. most absurd, successful use of a... And then they did Space Ghost! <laughs> and then they did it again with Harvey B... Harvey Bird... Not Harvey Beaks, Harvey Birdman. I heard Harvey, he, Harvey Birdman successful. was did not last as long as Space Ghost Coast to Coast, but it was still popular. Oh yeah! <laughs> so they took <laughs> two. Bits. They took two mostly forgotten old shows that did happen to have their own semi-strong fan base of nostalgic people, strong for old '70s cartoons in this era, and they took the clip. They they, if I remember correctly, 
Originally, they didn't animate their own Space Ghost. They just edited Stock clips of animation. him, edited all the background out around him, and just used that. Am I right? Uh, yeah. Pretty much. It was a very weird way to recycle footage. I've I had never seen, I had never thought of anything like that at the time, and there had been animated and puppet talk show hosts before, and they did not last. I don't think they actually. Well, I think they did interview them, but then like just completely changed what the questions were in the context of the show. So they just like took answers to completely different questions and just asked different questions for this. They may have just found someone else's interview footage. No, <laughs> no, because they quite often said, you know, thank you, Space Ghost. I'm happy to be here and stuff like that. A lot of the times the guests would actually interact and, you know, keep up. So they, it wasn't like they were completely out of the loop. Right. They had Joel Hodginson up there. For those of you not knowing, that was the creator and original host, and I guess he's now working on the new version of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Push the button, Frank. But yeah, so Space Ghost was definitely a very fantastic show in, like, absurdist humor. There should be cartoon characters that Mystery Science Theater watch old cartoons. I think I saw one of those. I thought I think I saw like a YouTube channel trying to do that, but I'm not sure if they lasted at all. Although they were like all puppets, they weren't animated themselves. No, you see, Joel is a real person. He interviews real people movies. It's racist if you don't get cartoons to interview cartoon movies. Review True. cartoon movies. Though I will say. I don't really have the time to do it right now. That's kind of why I'm doing this kind of thing, because it's a lot quicker and easier to make. But it keeps your hand in, and it gets you, it keeps your name out there. Yeah, but I, I wanted to... Part of me wants to one day make, like, the high-budget Mystery Science Theater 3000 Let's Play, essentially. That'd be fun. Like, have, like... like All right. Even make it, like, in the universe of the show I'm working on, where... Dr. Schnitz and Schnibble Schnutz shoots them into space and forces them to play the thing he hates. Video games. He's like, oh no, I have to play video games. This is the world. Trixie in Toyland. Uh, actually, I was thinking of in the in the spirit of the Mystery Science Theater 3000 and their, their, very, and their cheesiness, I was thinking a really good first game to play for that would be Earth Defense Force 4.1. Probably. I've been actually playing a lot of that lately. Samurai Zombie Nation. Ooh, is that a game? Oh my. <laughs> One moment. I want to hear your reaction. I guess new segment on this new vlog. Is me Keith showing reacts. stuff. Keith reacts and you don't see what I'm reacting to. Yes, but most, a, a large percent of the audience will be familiar with Samurai Zombie Nation. Spoonie talked about it, a number of people have talked about oh, it. Oh, wait, is that the one with, like, Sean Connery's head or something? Or some martial artist's head? There you go. You got it. Wow, this guy beat it in 25 uh, minutes. That's ahead. Well, it turns out you had actually heard of it, so... Just remember the first boss is the Statue of Liberty. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyhow... Talking not about... a very nice attitude to take. I mean, it's not like the Japanese have any reason to be mad at the Americans for any reason at uh, any point. Not at all. There's no kind of animosity between the nations. There was a... really no... You know, unfortunately, as much as I talk about how awesome Space Ghost Coast to Coast was, half the guests wouldn't even be recognized by kids and teenagers today. Yeah, that is unfortunate, but time... 
Time makes fools as of us all, as Fry would say. Yes, I, I'm pretty sure someone before Fry said that. True, but there was a time where Futurama was cancelled from Fox, but then Cartoon Network saved them. They do that a lot with a lot of Fox's rejects, or at least two of them. Yeah. Hope they don't save Alan Gregory. Ooh. Well, yeah, um... For those of you not in the know, after Fox canceled the Futurama, Adult Swim, Cartoon Network's, um... Late night, older audience cartoon show... Well, I mean, it used to be that. Now it's, like, a lot of live-action stuff. Picked up a lot of their reruns and helped, uh... Keep the show alive by giving the fans what they wanted. Actually showing the show instead of putting on really bad schedules and messing it up for everybody. They also saved, uh, Family Guy, so, you know, make of that what you will. I'll, I'll be impartial in this moment. Anyhow, we've been going for a little while, so let's maybe mention one more show that we would like to talk about and then maybe end this first episode. Well, I don't know. Cartoon Network's got a hell of a lot more to talk about. And well, we can make no a part matter two what we out talk of it. about. If we talk about Dexter, we're not talking about the Powerpuff Girls. If we talk about the Powerpuff Girls, we're not talking about, you know... <clears throat> How about we Cartoon talk Network, about Dexter you know, now, and then we can make a sequel episode where we talk about all the shows that have reboots of them now. Which would include the Powerpuff Girls. Alright. So I guess we're going to want to talk about problem solvers, right? <laughs> Close. Close. <laughs> I'll give you partial credit. The Let's modifiers? That that was a that was a can that was a non accepted Nickelodeon pilot. No, he offered it to Cartoon Network too. Oh, come on, uh, no one took it. That was a good show. It looked like it could have been great. It had British people in it. Maybe that's why it didn't sell. Okay, Maybe serious like... guess this time. Are we wanting to talk about Adventure Time? Uh, Dexter's Lab. It's nostalgic. Um, oh, nostalgic know. only. Okay. Well, just, I can work with that. Yeah. Dexter's Laboratory. Why did Dexter have an accent? To make him sound smarter. But, uh, yeah, that that was one of the first shows made by my boy, the person whose name I will probably Gennady never pronounce. Gennady Tartakovsky. Yeah. Gendy Tartakovsky? Gendy. Fun fact, this last week I got my wife to watch... To, a few, three weeks ago I got my wife to try watching Samurai Jack... And then we couldn't watch anything else for a couple of weeks during TV time until she we had watched every single one of them all the way to the new season. Awesome. Always good, yeah. Gen Gendy is both the creator of Dexter's Lab, also Samurai Jack, and the tragically cancelled by after only one season symbiotic titan. Isn't he married to someone famous? Uh, you're thinking about Craig McCracken, the creator of Powerpuff Girls and Foster's yes. Home for Imaginary Friends. Mar they married to Lauren Faust to create the, basically the person behind making the newest iteration of My Little Pony. She didn't create oh, My Little Pony. Oh, crap, I misremembered. I was going to say The Littlest Pet Shop. <laughs> the Littlest Pet Shop and me. But, yeah. So, Wait a minute! But Dexter's, while Gendy was working on the story. Did you just say that My Little Pony for someone cre created by someone with the last name Faust? Indeed. I knew it would take a deal of the devil to get that 80s... No, I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I, you you got to remember what I saw when I hear My Little Pony. I grew up in the 80s. Well, I didn't watch the show of it. I definitely did watch that movie with the schmooze and witches that used their giant bra as a sail. Yes. Catchy song. Well, they had to have one catchy song per movie, and the rest are mostly crap. Don't look it up. Right. Um, but they always had to have one catchy song for a single. Totally. Now, do you remember any other song from that movie? Nope. Other than maybe the Sea Ponies, Little Earworm? Not at all. No. No, you don't. I only do because I've had this exact same conversation with other bronies 
and that I actually looked up the songs from that movie, and even when I heard them, there was only one or two that I went, oh, I remember this. The other was like, it's like I've never heard these before. Right. But, yeah, so Dexter's Lab, first show, actual show created by Gendy, and, uh, while it didn't really have the kind of serious action that his later shows would have, it still had a lot of charm to it. I so would have watched a Justice Friends series. Let's see, do you remember the uh, TV movie they made of the show? I wanted to be the one to save the future. <laughs> Robots go back in time and destroy the one the who one saved, who saved the, future. the future. What was the name of that one? Ego time? Trip. Ego Trip, that was it. All I could think of was Channel Chasers, and that's the wrong show. Wrong show. But, but yeah. worth watching. It's definitely shows like Dexter's Lab that really sort of... Probably are one of the founding shows that really gets me to like animation nowadays because... That show was a lot of things. It was a giant robot show. It was a space sci-fi adventure. It was... It was occasionally a touching family show. Yeah. It was this absurd comedy with sitcom-like situations. There was a big old spy episode, and it just... It really goes to show how much animation can do. That show I'm glad they softened so the edges a bit over time. Because, honestly, it was hard to like Dee Dee when she was destroying everything by her, you know, oblivious thrashing around. Yeah. I did like That's... how they did become, like, more likable characters over time. Well, they became your standard bickering... They, they had to make her less pure stupid over time. Yeah. They, they And they made it more that she was more emotionally in tuned while Dexter was more, um... Yeah, left brain and right brain. Right. Oh, fun fact about that show. Did you know that um, Gendy based um, the two characters on him and his brother? Dee Dee and Dexter, he based them off of him and his brother's relationship. Did not know that. That's funny. And did you know that actually he saw himself as Dee Dee? That I would guess from what I've known of Gendy Tartakovsky. Yeah, basically his brother was apparently in like a lot of honor programs and stuff. He kind of always felt dumb and like he was messing up all of his smart brother's, um, you know, smart person stuff. So like Stanford and Sta oh, no. <clears throat> I'm making Disney reference. That's not what we're doing today. But yeah. Stanford and Stanley. Pines. Right. I probably didn't need to actually clarify who I was talking about. Yeah, that's a terrible Dexter's mouth. Anyways, do you have any uh, last um, statements that you'd like to make on Dexter's lab? Uh, they should have let it die and never brought it back when they brought it back? Yeah, definitely. I think a lot of shows. I think it bears mention just how lackluster and, frankly, bad the resurrected show was when it came back. And you should all watch it and think about that before you... D beg that your favorite show come back years after it's gone. Oh, yeah. Teen Titans Go! Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely want to one day make a whole video dedicated to reboots. You do what? know that Teen Titans Go is original universe canon, right? Th that seems impossible. Cons I mean, what do you mean by... They're an original universe, or they're canon to the original universe? They're canon to the TV, to the original Teen Titans TV show. There's an in-universe episode where uh, Control Freak admits they all used to be cooler, but the Titans pissed him off, so he shifted reality, so they're all stupid and annoying. Ah. Uh, because I was about to say, that seems a little impossible, considering they met Trigon for the first time in that series. Uh, whatever. Different reality. Um... They can they can justify it. I'm not going to. If they can shift reality, I can shift my personal reality to one in which that show doesn't exist. Oh come on! Original Teen Titans wasn't perfect, and anybody says it was, I always say, "Mother, may I?" It wasn't perfect, but I liked it. 
Oh, it was better than damn near everything else of the of the time. Uh, the trouble is, it's hard to remember what ex it, it all blurs together to me. So it's hard to remember what aired alongside what. Right. You especially don't remember the shows you weren't watching. You know. Exactly. So when I was like when I was watching, just go back all the way back to early childhood. I was watching Pound Puppies on ABC. What cartoon was NBC showing? I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, and I I don't remember. Actually, it's weird. I remember that I didn't watch Digimon, but I can't remember what show was on on WB in that time slot that I was watching instead. Animaniacs. Ooh. That would be a very good candidate. I'm almost, the thing is, it's just that in that after-school slot, you got to remember WB often, m many networks had two ep two episodes of Animaniacs back-to-back -back after school. Well, no, this oh, is no. talking about Saturday mornings that I was... Oh, oh and on, well, Saturday mornings, yes. Uh, no, I don't know if they... I know they had to double up shows later on when they started to suck. But I don't think in their heyday, I don't think they ever really had to double up their... No, no, because I, I, I can at least remember at least commercials when they're talking about, uh, you know, an old episode of Static, and then after that, a, you know, a new episode of Static Shock. So they did sometimes double up their shows, at least for events. Hmm. Anyhow, so I think that'll be about all we do for our first episode. Oh. And I've got some stuff to work on before I can force Keith to watch more Captain Planet. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. More Hoggish Greedly and more... <laughs> uh, what you, I can't even Loot remember what the evil... Loot and Plunder. Cap Loot and Plunder, the capitalist supervillain. Yeah. At least they didn't name him, like, Bank Fraud. <laughs> <laughs> bank Fraud. Tax Evasion. No, you're not even trying anymore. Yeah, Bank Fraud. <laughs> And the best part, is, and no, it's a trick actually, because bank fraud actually embezzles money. Ah, that's right, a, that is a bank fraud. Bank fraud actually, you know, um, uh, uh, engages in humans trafficking. <laughs> so the name throws people off because they're busy looking for bank fraud. Right. So you know, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of show I haven't named yet, and maybe there'll be more episodes and. Before we go, maybe I could give you a quick sneak peek of what I've been working on. It's in the animatic stages, so look at that move. This is very, Whee! Exciting. very exciting for Chris, who can't see this. But yes. I am terrible at watching streams, because almost every time I tune into Twitch or whatever... I get caught up watching, I'm enjoying it, and then things slow down, I get bored, and I move the mouse and I try to find the scroll bar and click forward a few minutes. Quite. And you can't do that in reality. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed this, and if there are any people out there who are watching this video, you know, write a comment like, in the comment section. Like, comment, or subscribe. Only like if you like the video because they do nothing for the YouTube algorithm. Only subscribe if you want to see more videos. But definitely do write a comment because I do love to read comics. comics. And always brush your teeth. And tip your waitress. Goodbye. Good night, everybody.